We're here at Mobile World Congress Americas in Los Angeles. I'm here with Amit from Affirm Networks. And it, this is such an interesting show because operators around the world are talking to Affirm Networks about uh, virtualizing their infrastructure. What are the main drivers that are, that are propelling that trend forward? You know, uh, if you look at the service provider networks and how the operators have been, you know, driving LTE, 4G, and now preparing and gearing up for 5G in earnest, right? One of the things that they're limited by is the inflexibility of the legacy solutions, right? Okay. So it is basically a, a huge weight on them, right, to actually have to go deal with the interoperability, deployment, the cycles it takes to actually deploy these legacy solutions. The inflexibility constrains their ability to drive new services. It hurts them in being able to drive new revenue models. It hurts them commercially because of the amount of capex that's required to actually launch bigger footprint, newer services. These are the key things that are actually holding service providers back, and that is kind of you know the approach that a firm is taking to solve these these very roadblocks, so to say. And virtualization has been a key driver and basically a sea change in the way the service providers are deploying their networks now. That leads perfectly into um, an announcement you guys had uh, at recently with the availability of uh, a service on AWS. Um, what's the, the, the impact of the announcement, and you know, not just on Affirm Networks, but on the industry at large? Absolutely. This is, a, this is something that we've been living uh, through for several years now, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you took, think of Affirm and the way Affirm has evolved, right? Affirm drove kind of, you know, the vanguard in terms of virtualization, NFV and virtualizing, you know, service provider networks. If you think about this, Cloudifying the network is kind of a logical extension of that movement, right? You know, as we have virtualized the network, we have driven efficiencies in cost, we have driven efficiencies in automation, we have driven efficiencies and time to market for new services. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. Cloud and cloudifying the network now takes it just to a whole new level. And you know, the timing is very important. You know, think about 5G, right? Think right. of the new use cases that are coming today, even pre-5G, for example, autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. augmented reality types of applications, right? These applications require low latency, right. very high dense coverage, mm -hmm. and they actually require a much more economical approach to number one, deploying, so CapEx, and running OpEx of the network. So putting these same services that we drove the charge in virtualizing, now putting them on the cloud, and putting them on the cloud as well as the edge cloud, is a key aspect of a firm's journey to help service providers solve all the legacy issues that they've run up against. So the offering with AWS is the, the mobile core as a service. Absolutely, you know, with all the services that come with it, the GI LAN services like video translating, transcoding, deep packet inspection, all components of a service that you need to create end-to-end -end mm -hmm. revenue generating services, yeah. that's what we've actually now cloudified and put on AWS. Fantastic. Now, what type of operators are, are the target market for this, for this type of service? Because obviously, eventually, it seems like all operators could find some benefit in it. But which ones um, sort of have the most immediate need? Absolutely. You know, the, the most immediate ones that we see interesting uh, interest from are the MVNOs. And there's a very interesting trend. I'm sure you observed this. You have a lot of MNOs to differentiate and launch new services and target certain market segments. Mm -hmm. They're actually launching MVNOs and also turning into MVNEs where they're enabling Right. MVNOs on their network, right? Okay. So those are the very obvious ones. Then we see the IoT marketplace, right? And you know, you see large enterprises. For example, you know, connected car, right? Think of connected car fleet monitoring. These types of service cases that require what you would call MNOs to reach out of their spectral geography, right? See, MNOs have large reaches, right? So right. They, they have reach across all the area. They have spectrum. Mm -hmm. But now, all of a sudden, think about this. Now we're talking pan planet networks these are okay. not these are not geographical boundaries as in nations these right. are planet wide right yeah, so yeah. when somebody buys a car and they drive across from one nation to the other they yeah. expect that coverage to continue in the same quality of service to continue right right yeah. so these are the types of use cases which kind of shows you it's enterprises iot connected car mnos mvnos mvnes they're all candidates for this and that's the reason for the timing of this launch so when we're talking about the you know the cloud as a service model, what what level of performance are operators looking for? Is it, and is it going to be the same that they've come to expect from virtualized services? That is a very key part, right? And if you think about it, that was one of the existential issues that we had to solve to make sure that we can provide a service as a cloud, right? And if you think 
So the answer is absolutely yes. If you think of a firm networks, and one of the reasons how we have made virtualization NFV mainstream, well, it is our performance on virtualized networks, right? Because you know, one of the things we've always said is, you don't have to make a choice that I will virtualize because of all these benefits of faster time to market, elasticity of my network capability, uh, faster of you know deployment and orchestration with automation in the network. I don't have to make a choice between all these and performance. It's right. and you do all this at a much higher performance. So one of the things about today's announcement of our you know public cloud offering on AWS is that it's a hyperscale virtual EPC, right? Mm. So there is no again just like we did in the NFE. We didn't ask the operators to make a sacrifice or a choice. We're doing the exact same thing as we clarify this. On the public network, same performance, same reliability, and all the benefits of putting it on the public cloud. That is our differentiator from a firm. That's fantastic. So last question, what type of services are best suited to the mobile core as a service on AWS? The IoT type services are a prime and you know a, a quick example of that, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think of connected cars, that's an obvious example, you know, of you know it's it's IoT but actually intense IoT, right? Another one that we are beginning to see a lot of interest in is augmented reality type applications with near real-time latency requirements. Right. You know, you, you talked about performance earlier. Yeah. So we can drive very high workloads and throughputs. All these types of services that depend on the network to offer not just today's reliability, performance, low latency, but better than that. These are the types of services that are perfect candidates, and that's where we're seeing a lot of interest from service providers. Well, you solved a, a, an immense technical challenge in getting the mobile core, delivering it in the cloud as a service, and uh, I, think, I think it'll be really interesting to see how operators take advantage of this in the, in the weeks and months to come. Absolutely, we're very excited about this, and you, know, you can see from the level of interest from the service provider community, this is something that's going to help us transform the market yet again. Fantastic. All right, well, thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you so much. Very nice to talk to you.